What's going on, everybody? It is January 16th, Tuesday slate, uh, four games, interesting values, sort of, uh, waiting on a little bit of news yet, but, you know, it'll be fun. We can't have all days that are as awesome as uh, dual slate Mondays for MLK, which was awesome. Uh, apologies for the lack of the live stream last night. Wife ended up taking an earlier flight and got in at 5 instead of uh, 7.30, so, you know, took the night off from uh, recording, but we'll be back tonight live. Um, things went well in the first two entries of the, the single entry series on FanDuel, so I'm going to keep doing that for the rest of the week, um, but let's get into it. First game up, Magic and T-Wolves. Uh, Magic with a 104.5 implied total, which would be 6th on the day. And right off the bat, I don't see a ton that's awesome, but, you know, we'll dig in anyway. So Aaron Gordon, 7,500 on FanDuel, 7,600 on DK. You know, you need, I mean, you'd like to see him hit 40, but, you know, under just under 40 would be fine. Has he been recently? Stupid Discord messages. All right. You know, 32 in the last one. He's hit 40 once in the past two weeks. Um, but, you know, not the best lately. I don't get the sense that Minnesota would be a good matchup for him. You know, the shooting's all relatively indifferent. <clears throat> he doesn't take a ton of corner threes. I don't, I don't see much to be interested in in Aaron Gordon outside of the fact that, you know, he does have the ability to pop. So he's in play, I guess, in GPPs, but I don't necessarily love the price. Fournier, 5,400 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. So we're, we would need 27. One game in the 30s. Everything else has been... Not very good lately. Um, the price on DK is not bad. And he's probably just a four. I wouldn't disregard him. He's close. Uh, if he gets hot, you know that that could work out in our favor. Biombo, sixty four hundred on Fanduel. Uh, to me, that's not playable. Uh, 5,600 on DK, though. A little bit more playable. Um, if you can get to like 28, you'd be okay with it on DK. Uh, 50 in the last one. Two, three other games, uh, you know, in that stretch in the past two weeks. So, while I wouldn't want to touch him at all <clears throat> on FanDuel, I think you can certainly make a case on DK. Uh, it's still not an amazing price, but it's not bad. Alfred Payton's price is atrocious on FanDuel. 7200 Give me a break. I'll pass. 6500 on DK, though, so he would need 32 to hit value, to hit 5x on DK. Um, he's done that four out of his last six. One game in the 40s. You know, he had 32, 34, 38. That's not bad. Um, you know, not a crazy amount of defense coming out of Minnesota. At the guard position, at least. Ugh. You know, on a four-game slate, sometimes you scrape the bottom of the barrel. Forgot to add the little caveat there. Jonathan Simmons... 4,700 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. Uh, you need like 23, 24, somewhere in that neighborhood. Done it once. Did get the boost in minutes in this most recent one. Um, sure. Look, none of this looks ter terribly good. And then Hazonia, 
4,300 on FanDuel, 4,600 on DK. You know, 20 and change. Um, man, I really wish that he didn't get the the minutes haircut there in this most recent one. But four straight games that would have been, you know, value-ish plays on uh, on FanDuel. On the off chance the minutes stay okay, that might not be bad. I mean, it's not good, but it might not be bad. Um, yeah, still just probably a three, though. It's not like he's exceptional. Yeah, it looks like the Magic are just filler tonight. Little bits across the board. Not the team you're looking to load up on. All right, to Minnesota we go. Been playing so much better lately. I should update the four factors too. Let's see what we've got here for Timberwolves. Timberwolves 112.5 implied total. Number one on the slate. So I'm anxious to see where we go from there. Just want to update the four factors info. It's been a day or two. Boom. Okay, gonna love Minnesota here, as will, I would imagine, everyone else. So Wiggins is 6,500 on FanDuel. He's 6,100 on DK. Um, the Magic are 11th in defensive free throw rate, which is pretty good, but Minnesota's the best in the league. Basically don't turn the ball over. Orlando doesn't really get a lot of turnovers. And then Minnesota, exceptional offensive rebound team. Orlando, basically the worst defensive rebounding team. So this is going to be an interesting focus. Wiggins would need 32 to hit value on FanDuel. He's done that. Wow, they've played so many more games. One, two, three, four, five. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So nine games in the past two weeks. Oh, no, I need to filter that down. That should be that day. There we go. Eight games. Okay. So 33, 33, 47, 46. Uh, Wiggins has been dramatically better lately. I see no reason why that can't continue in this particular game. Wiggings. Oh, God. I should make a shirt with all of these stupid names that I have on here. It's not a bad game for Wiggins. He's not overly reliant on the three ball. He's more of a mid-range guy. It's a shame that the prices on FanDuel aren't as good as they are on DK. He's... A lot of this looks a lot better on DK. Let's see. He's probably going to be one of the best shooting guards. Well, we still need to see CJ and uh, and Book and whatever shakes out in the Mavs. He's probably the best look here right now. I'm going to say it's a two. On a four-game slate like this, there's a lot of upside in that number. You know, if he goes for 45 or something, that's... You know, you're looking at 7x. Jimmy Butler is 9,400 on FanDuel. 9,200 on DK. That's 47 to hit value. He's done it four out of his last eight. You know, a 40-point game in his most recent one. That'll get you there. Um... Price is a little high. I'd love to see him around like 9,000 on FanDuel. I know that sounds ridiculous, but you know, every little couple hundred bucks counts. Um, no, I like him, but he's not a great value. 
who are the offensive rebounders for this squad? You would expect it to be Taj, but... Uh, okay, so Wiggins is, a for a wing, a really good offensive rebounder. I did not realize that. That makes me like him even more. Towns, more of a defensive rebounder. Jimmy Butler, huge offensive rebounder. So that makes me a bit more excited as well. Not as much Taj. Oh yeah, I forgot Taj isn't like an ex exceptional rebounder. So Wiggins and Butler are the two big time offensive rebounders for their positions at least. Towns and Taj are both, you know, mid tier. The guards don't really do it as guards. That's interesting. Okay. I probably like Butler a skosh more now. All right, Towns is 9,500 on both sites. So 45, 47 and change for value. One, two, three, three times in his last eight. Again, like he's been playing really well. Who guards Towns on the Magic? Aaron Gordon? Gotta be Gordon, right? It's obviously not. Not Biombo, so doesn't Towns just roast Aaron Gordon? You would think. Uh, I think Towns is a two for me. What's the correlation for Towns and Wiggins? It can't be good, right? There's no way those two feed off each other. negative there that's kind of depressing but you know we'll see how it all fits Let's see if they're both in agreement ah no they're kind of running against each other so nothing crazy there Teague, 6,900 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. I, I probably won't have any part of him on FanDuel, but on DK, that's a much different number. Can you get to mid to high 30s? Yeah, he's 37, 39, two of his games back. To me, he's a DK 3. Hmm. Yeah, and a FanDuel 4. Taj, 5,600 and 5,400. So can he get to like 28? He's had three games there. Three of his last five have been 29 or higher. I would imagine that he would be getting a lot of Biombo. He's just a straight four for me. But Minnesota is obviously going to be one of the first places to look. Next up is Boston Celtics hosting the Pelicans. Uh, Celtics 109.25 implied total is third. And the Pels will still be without Jameer. So they will be more than a little bit interesting to look at. It's going to be, you know, pick your stud right. And then whoever rolls the dice on Rondo, do you get good Rondo or bad Rondo? All right. Horford, 7,100 on FanDuel, 7,400 on DK. Man, this pricing today is weird as shit. 35 for Horford. You know, hit it in this most recent. Boston has not been playing much. They should be relatively well rested coming against the Pelicans who are incredibly short-handed. It should be interesting. Might want to bet on the Celtics in the second half. I mean, I'm fine with Horford, I guess. It's not like a great matchup or anything. Should have one of those two clowns on the court at all times. I don't know how much they stagger. 
Um, but the price isn't horrible. He's probably a little overpriced. Uh, to me, it's just a three. I want to have a better defensive matchup than that. Um, you know, it's a little bit tough sledding for him. Kyrie, 8,200 on FanDuel, 8,500 on DK. I can't, I can't make heads or tails of this pricing. 40 for Kyrie. Hit it once in his last four. You know, should be well rested. Uh, defensively, you know, it's going to be Rondo and I guess Ian Clark. You know, that's, it's hard to not like Kyrie in this in this case. He might even be a two for me just because of the matchup. Just not a lot of defense from the guard position. Um, you know, his shot selection is balanced, so I'm not too worried about that. He can keep himself. I mean, he's, and he's arguably the best finisher at the rim in the league. So, if anybody can traverse the two monsters, it's probably Kyrie. Uh, let's see, let's see, what are we thinking here? Am I crazy? Where's Cruncher on him? Yeah, they feel a similar kind of way. I think he's a two. I think this is a really, really good spot for a, a big game out of Kyrie. Games should be relatively close. You know, if they do go with a lot of Rondo, he's an absolutely atrocious defender. Um, what's his plus minus for? Yeah, oh, atrocious. I love Kyrie. Yeah, I feel real comfortable about that. At least for right now. We could all go to shit in 20 minutes. Jalen Brown, 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. Are these, why are these inverse prices are freaking me out? I feel like I'm missing something. 27 for Jalen. Two games in the 30s in his last four. Um, you know, for someone that's... Yeah, like, that's not bad for uh, the option that he is. Um... A little nervous about his minutes. Well, not his minutes. Um, that'll be Tatum. We'll get to that. I mean, it's hard to say, like, you don't like Jalen Brown in this case. I don't know what I would be nervous about. I mean, it's he's not getting anybody super-duper scary. Uh, everybody just sort of looks like fairly decent value to me here. He's just a three. Uh, Jason Tatum. Now, he's a little bit worrisome from a minutes perspective. Um, I feel like they could slice into his a little bit. But, you know, they have had a ton of rest lately. But I do worry about the rookie wall with him. 5,600 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. So you're looking for 28 on FanDuel. Um, you know, he's got in his last four... We can go anywhere from 12 to 47, so. Throwing darts. If someone were out, I think I would like Tatum a lot here. <sighs> He's a three. I see using a lot of Irving. And then swapping in like Brown and Tatum if you were doing some sort of bulk lineups. I think that would be a good look. Um, I don't have much interest in Marcus Smart, particularly on FanDuel. On DK, he's 5,200. Uh, I mean, to get him to 6x, he can just barely get there. He's just so limited offensively that it's it's tough to really want to invest in Marcus Smart. He's a 4 on um, DK for me because I can't totally write him off, but that's probably it. Go to the Pels now. This will be the interesting one. I have no idea how this is going to shake out. I don't even know what their prices are, so kind of excited. Mm, coffee's good this morning.
Okay. So Pels, 104.75 implied total is fifth. And first up is going to be Boogie. Oh my god, these prices are so... Okay. So Boogie is 11-2 on FanDuel, 10-5 on DK. I prefer this matchup for Anthony Davis more so than Cousins. What is Cousins' history against Horford? I don't generally look into this sort of stuff, but for guys that have been in the league for a while and played some games, I'd love to see, you know, peaks and valleys against people. I mean, Horford and Boogie are both... <clears throat> guys that play 30 minutes for their teams regularly so every game that they've played they've essentially been going against each other horford is nine and one in his career against boogie average is 20 seven and a half three 2.7 blocks that's crazy i hit a block party in 2011 he had a block party in 2016 too okay It's interesting to see that Boogie hasn't exactly gone crazy. Never scored 30. I mean, he's been solid for, you know, 20. I mean, 20 and 11. Might not get it done at that price, though. Look, I'd be lying if I said that, you know, it wasn't still... A decent price for you know one of the best offensive centers if not the best offensive center in basketball I don't love it though he's a three for me I, th I think I like AD more especially you know being slightly cheaper Drew Holiday though 7500 on FanDuel 6700 on DK dude's gonna have all the minutes he can handle he needs 37 for value on FanDuel. Uh, at 54 in the last one, he's been basically at value or higher in five of his last six. Um, he's a FanDuel 2 for me, and he is without question a, a, a DK 1. Um, at 6,700, he should be... Like, like, I'm not worried about the matchup. He's gonna play, he should play, so long as this game is close, 35 plus minutes with the ability to play into the 40s. I rarely project more than 36. In this particular case, I, I am up to 37 for Cousins and Drew. Um, it's just hard to go too much further than that because there's always foul trouble, which is going to be fully independent of anything that's going on in the game. If you get into foul trouble, you're just going to come out and play less minutes. The, the possibility of injury, um, it's hard to project someone for much more than that. You can use that and as sort of a, a way to shift your curve. You know, There's additional upside in the number if you think that he can get there, but 36 is usually about my threshold unless there are extenuating circumstances. But yeah, Drew... 6,700, I mean, that's just an insane number for him. For him to hit 5x on DK, that's 33 fantasy points. He had 54 uh, two nights ago. Anthony Davis. I normally... Uh, the, my problem with Anthony Davis is this. I end up taking him on nights where he rolls his ankle. And... Puts up 46 in 27 minutes and you think, oh, what might have been? And then, you know, on Sunday when you don't, when I don't play, he goes for 85 and 50 minutes. And I would have certainly had him. So <laughs> I hope that I'm not wrong. But 11,000 on FanDuel, 10-2 on DK. You know, not the greatest price. You need him to get to 55 on FanDuel, but he's done that in three of his last five games. It's obviously a tough matchup, but you know maybe this is the Anthony Davis showcase, and this is how he ends up on the Celtics. 
You never know. Um, he's a two for me. I, he, I think he's the best stud on the board. Yeah, agreed. Eton Moore, 4,800 on FanDuel, 4,500 on DK. Um, should be getting the minutes, but that price is kind of scary. You know, he needs 24, 25, something like that. Can get there. Uh, I'm not, it's not like my favorite thing in the world. He's just a three. Ian Clark, um, you know, if he's going to get 25 minutes or so, it's something they need to pay attention to. 3,600 on FanDuel, 3,200 on DK. And that's the big takeaway. Um, on DK, you know, he's still a three because he's, what, the sixth option on the Pelicans? But decent filler. I wouldn't disregard him. Same thing sort of on FanDuel. I, I wouldn't, I won't seek him out but if he's the linchpin to get me you know up to a guy that can go off i might think about that and then to everybody's favorite point guard rondo uh rondo is 5500 on FanDuel, duel 5, on dk you know you never know if you're going to get the rondo 30 minute game this is back to Boston. I would imagine he's chomping at the bit to play a ton of minutes here. You need him to get to 27 on FanDuel. He's done that once in his last six, and that game was 44 fantasy points. Dude is the trickiest guy to nail here on the slate because the variability in what comes out of him today is probably the like the key to where you finish relative to the money more so than anybody else because you could have Rondo and he can put up 15 fantasy points in 24 minutes and be atrocious or you could have Rondo and he puts up 44 and suddenly you know he's the key to you finishing at 325 and FanDuel he's a much better play on DK at 5000 that full stop um I don't expect to have him, and I hope that I don't, because I don't like cheering for him, but the recipe is there for him to have a huge game. Uh, I'm going to say that he's a FanDuel 4 and a DK 3, because I just don't trust the minutes. If any news comes out to the contrary, I'd be happy to make that switch. To Denver now, Nuggets hosting the Mavs. 108.25 implied total is fourth for the Nuggets. Um, only interesting note for this game, and I use interesting in a very relaxed manner, uh, J.J. Barea is out for today. So potentially increased minutes for Yogi Ferrell and uh, Dennis Smith Jr. and Devin Harris. How long has Devin Harris been on the Mavs? I feel like Devin Harris has been on the Mavs, I mean, like, since the Nash days. <laughs> oh, okay. okay, so that's... It's been back and forth. So he was on the Mavs in 04 as a rookie. And now he's been back since 13. Dude, he's played nine years in Dallas. No wonder he feels like he's been there forever. Who was on that 04, 05... Mavs squad. They won 58 games, finished second. Dirk, Michael Finley, Josh Howard, Jason Terry, Stan. I remember that team. Oh, Pavel Pot Colson. Forgot about that dude. He was monstrous. How big was he? 7'5, 7'6? Yeah, 7'5. I don't know. There's probably a lot of people watching this that have no idea who this dude is. Real monster human being. Just ginormous. Look at that. Oh my god, it's terrifying. Anyway. <laughs> nuggets. I don't know what to do here. The Nuggets are scaring me. They're like opening their rotations a little bit, which is concerning. 
Prices are all over the place. Particular FanDuel price is tight. Oof. Gary Harris, 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. Um, you know, no team limits shots at the rim more than the Mavs. Which, I'll tell you what, that's a fascinating thing to think about for a team that, like, basically doesn't have the center that you would expect. You know, sometimes it's Dirk. <laughs> and they're limiting their shots at the rim that much. Yeah, we're, go we're going wide today with what we look at. I want to know how often Dirk is playing the five here. It's mostly Powell, right? Yeah, Powell and Solomon Mejeri. Mejeri. Okay, so it's not it's not Dirk as much as I thought it was. How often do they limit people getting to the rim with Dirk at the five? They played eleven hundred possessions with Dirk at the five, so that's like five hundred minutes. And they they're still eightieth percentile. At limiting shots to the rim. That is asinine. How does that happen? You would think, oh my god, there's like no rim protection there. That's nuts. Well, when they do get to the rim, people are shooting the lights out. Crazy. Gary Harris. Back on back on target here. Um I'm not wild about it. He needs 32 to hit value. He's done that twice in the past two weeks. But those two times that he did it were 45 plus. Doesn't feel like Dallas is the situation where like he just goes ham, especially at that price. He's just a four to me. I don't he's not gonna pop up. Here's one that's all over the place here. Murray, 6,700 FanDuel, 5,700 DK. I, it's like two different games. Wow, he had only had 6.2 fantasy points. Huh. So I've been on the... See, man, he's been not good lately. So you need 33 on FanDuel for 5X and 28 on DK. I mean, okay, so he's he's just a he's a DK two. That's uh, it's just that price is just ludicrous. He's probably a Fanduel Jam Jamal FD. I, oh my God, sometimes I hate myself. I'm gonna make him a three because I think it's a good matchup for him. But he should probably like in a, in a perfect world he's probably a four just because of that price, which I hate. But 57 on 5700 on DK. I mean, he's going to be owned out the ass. Nikola Jokic. This one's interesting. Huh. 9700 on FanDuel. Black. 8700 on DK. Less black. I mean, I need him to get to 50 on FanDuel. He's done it once. Two games in the 45s or higher, so you know, you wouldn't be uh you wouldn't be crazy upset there. And those games would be ginormous for you on DK. I I don't see a scenario where I can have him on FanDuel at that price. Um, that's It's just very prohibitive. Uh, he's a three on DK. Wilson Chandler is 4,500 and 4,200. Dude's all over the place. You know, has the ability to put up... I mean, in back-to-back -back games, he went for 6 and 36. I just... That's... I, uh, never feel confident if you have Wilson Chandler. What a weird dude. He's just a straight... 4... 
Will Barton, 6,500 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. I'm not going to have him at all on FanDuel, and you need him to get to 28 for 5x on DK, which is uh, perfectly feasible for Will Barton. And Trey Lyles, who has been getting a bit less minutes, you got 20 in the last one, 9.5 fantasy points. 5,800 and 5,500 are the prices. I'm not super interested in him, but again, they're in a situation where they have, you know, mid-tier implied total. They're the favorites. They're playing at home. Um, his price is fine. It's just not anything to write home about. And then Mason Plumley is in the mid-fours. Uh, I'm not super interested there. His ceiling is 37 here. Um, I don't see this as a scenario where he gets there. I won't have him. I get if you want to. He's a four. I'm trying to rank more people here and use the fours a little bit more liberally. Like for guys that are not... They're not total disregards, but they're unlikely. I'm anxious to see Dallas now with the, uh, the change in minutes to their backcourt. Well, we don't want Harrison Barnes. Holy hell. Harrison Barnes, 6,800 on both sites. That's 34 for value. Man, how bad do my projections think Harrison Barnes is? He's hit 34 in three of his last six, been above 30 in all of those games. Yeah, my projection system thinks Harrison Barnes is dog duty. That's funny. Uh, okay. Um, he's a four. I think that I'm probably a little low on him in my just like my raw numbers. If I bumped him up a point or two, he'd probably be like, eh. So I'll just make him a four. Wes Matthews, 5,200 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK. You're looking for 25. Um, he's had two 30-point games in the past two weeks. He's hit 25 by all accounts and three others. Um, does tend to shoot some corner threes. He's probably just a three. Okay, Yogi Ferrell, 5,300 on FanDuel, 4,500 on DK. You need 25 plus. He's had 25, well, he's had 30 or higher in his last three. Um, a lot of that is minutes related. I have him as 0.68 fantasy points per minute. That's atrocious. That's so bad. Uh, but if he's going to get extra minutes, you know, he's someone to look at. He's going to pop up a lot, I would expect. Um, I'd rather have Dennis Smith Jr., so Farrell's a three. Dennis Smith, I have him projected for 32 minutes. He's at 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. So you're looking for 32. Um, he's done that. Three out of his last six. Everything else has been 28 or 29. I think he's a two. Uh, he's going to have the opportunity to get a lot of run. And in a situation against Denver where, you know, they're not, it's not like Jamal Murray is some lockdown dude. So I like it, especially at that price. Um, Got to like Dennis Smith. Now, Devin Harris. 3,500 on FanDuel, 3,400 on DK. I've got him at 24 minutes right now. That could very easily be higher. Um, I just don't expect him to get that much run. You would need him to get to, you know, I mean, 20 is your goal for anybody under 4,000. And he, you know, he got there once in a 23-minute game uh, in the past two weeks. 
if we hear anything else, like he's starting or I don't know why I said it like that. He could start right now and I wouldn't have any idea. Devin Harris, not exactly keeping my finger on the pulse of the things that Devin Harris does on a day-to-day -day basis. Where the hell is he? I was on shooting guard. There you are. No, it doesn't start. Um, look, if he gets the minutes, he could be a value at that price. Uh, don't don't go crazy over it. I'm not super interested in Dirk in this particular case. He would need 25 on FanDuel. That's a bit healthier than I'm looking for. Dwight Powell would need 20. Also not interested there. So that's it there for that game. Let's head to the last one. Portland and Phoenix. Um, TJ Warren is questionable. Uh, Shabazz Napier is questionable. I made up this line. I've got the Blazers as nine point favorites at home. 110.5 implied total would be second. Um, and obviously they're playing the Suns who are dreadful. Not entirely sure what we're going to see here. Oh, God. Pricing is awful tonight. I'm not excited. <laughs> CJ McCollum is 8,200 on FanDuel, 7,700 on DK. You're looking for 40. He had 40 in one, two, three, four, five of his last eight, almost six, but three of those games were without Dame. Um, the most recent game was rough for CJ. Did he like get the gate or foul trouble or something? It doesn't matter. Yeah, look, CJ should have a big game. Um. He should get Devin Booker. Devin Booker is a, absolutely terrible. Have they played already this year? I, I would guess they did. He had 46 back in October. Missed the first one, I guess. He has traditionally played very well, but you know, at a different price point. Um... I don't exactly love this price point here either, but from the matchup, I think I need to make him a two. Dame is 9,300 on both sites. That's like 46. In the three games that he's been back, he's been under it, you know, by a good bit, right at it, and then a 50 pointer. Um, I don't love the price. I prefer CJ from a matchup perspective. Dame could go crazy, though, clearly. Um, either of those guys, good offensive rebounders. There's no way Dame is, right? Yeah, no shit. 70th percentile for point guards. They're both uh, functionally okay at it. Good to know. Aminu is 5,500 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DK. Um, he's only in play on DK for me. And he's probably just a four. Um, the Suns kind of, oddly enough, take away the good things about Aminu. Nurkic, though. 7,000 on FanDuel. 6,700 on DK. <clears throat> Need him to get the 35. He's had one, two, three, four games at 35. One game at 32. But three of those games all happened without Dame. Which is really interesting to me. I guess, I would guess that he gets a gigantic boost with Lillard out. I mean, I guess, you know, that makes sense. You have to redistribute those 18 shots elsewhere, and Nurkic does have a, uh, a high usage rate, so it's not shocking that he guns a little bit more. I like him. I don't love him. But, again, it's the Suns, so everybody looks better by default. Uh, Evan Turner, he's a four. 
If he pops, he pops. Can't look at Napier. If uh, Napier ends up out, Pat Connaughton um, might sneak into play at that minimum salary. Finally, we got the Suns. 101.5 implied total based on my made-up line, which would be dead last. Let's see where that shakes out. Uh, like I said, TJ Warren is questionable if he's out. You know, Josh Jackson obviously gets a closer look. Devin Booker. 7,800 on FanDuel. 8,000 on DK. Um, should have the opportunity to shoot in the mid-range till his heart's content. You need 40 out of Booker. In his last six, he's had two games above 40. One at 44, one at 51. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to... What's his history been? So I know they've been good on D, but they're not actually good on D. Or at least, I don't think they're good on D. So he had 46 uh, in the game in October. It's a three... Um, I just don't love the implied total. TJ Warren. I, I mean, I'm perfectly fine with TJ Warren. 68 and 64. He need 34-ish. Um, had two 40-point games earlier in the month. I think it's a good spot for him. I don't want any part of Bender now that this price is up. Uh, Josh Jackson, I guess, is somebody that we need to pay attention to. You would think that I would have been able to type the word Josh there a little bit better, but I guess not. Um, I don't want to go crazy over Josh Jackson. He needs 25. You know, he had 30 without Warren. He had 39 a couple nights ago when everybody was healthy. He's been over 20 in his last four. Um, he's just a three. It's... I don't, I don't see Phoenix as the place to build around, but I think they'll probably fill in a position or two on this sort of slate. Tyler Eulis, though. 4,200 on FanDuel, 4,000 on DK. You need 20. He's done... He's had two 19-point games, one 20-point game, and two games, 23 and 24. Um... I think that's a decent spot for him. He shoots 62% of his shots in the mid-range. That's a place that the Blazers give up a, a bundle of shots. They're 27th in the league in uh, mid-range frequency defense. So, you know, he, he's, he should be able to find space and find the ability to get his shot. Um, I sort of like him in a in a GPP perspective because I think that he could go off just based on that if the shots are falling. Um, yeah. Other than that, I'm good here. I don't necessarily think Tyson Chandler is someone I'm interested in. He needs 25. Uh, he could go off. I, I don't trust it. So I think that's it. That's the short list. Let's uh, I'll bump this over here so my stupid face doesn't cover it up. That's where we're at for right now. Let's go throw these in the optimizer and see what comes out on the other side. I'm not super pumped about this slate. I liked both of those yesterday, particularly that morning slate. Um, this one, not so much. Let's churn out a bundle. Kablam! Okay. A lot of Brown. A lot of Dennis Smith Jr. So let's, let's focus on this. Let's refresh. So I'd say let's look at Dennis Smith Jr. Um, 
Drew Holiday coming up a ton. I'd say we'd want to look there. Towns is my number one center. Does he come up? Yeah. How often does AD come up? 36%. Can I get a lineup with AD and Towns? I assume no. Ooh, I can. So those are two lineups. <laughs> yeah, so I won't end up on one of those two. I don't think that would require some concessions of going with. I don't know, Gorgeous Dong, 3,700. He's been playing a couple extra minutes. Let's take an extra peek at him. That's Gorgie Zhang for anybody that's just listening and don't know that uh, he is uh, a f um, he's known as Gorgeous Dong time to time. Yeah, I, I probably disregarded him a little bit too quickly. On the off chance that he gets a couple extra minutes, which could be possible in a game against the Magic, um, it would make me want to not have Towns as my center, though. So if I backed off of Towns, Cousins, Horford, or Nurkic, they're all there. So we want AD. We want Dennis Smith Jr. Apparently we want, or we definitely want Drew Holiday. So that's 12 lineups left. Am I missing anybody that I definitely want to have in a lineup? I don't think so. Who's the next highest guy? It's Jalen. Let's do that. That's eight lineups. We'll say. Um, which small forward do I like the most there? It's probably Simmons, right? Simmons, Warren, Barnes. <clears throat> well, it's Warren, actually, if I... Might actually be Hazonia. That might be worth the, the dice roll. Oh yeah, Aaron Gordon got benched in the last one. Huh, that's interesting. I don't know. I'd probably have something in this neighborhood. I don't think I could focus too much more on it because it would, that would just be sort of silly. But something in this area looks okay. I, you know, I don't. I'm not married to Lyles. It's finding hard to find value here. Um. But yeah, you know, we're in the neighborhood there. Let's check out DK. We're going to need a little bit of news to break. Um, or it's going to be a tough fit. Let's do 50. Let's get real crazy. Oh, man. I was hoping for something better today. A lot of boogie here. Tons of Yogi Ferrell, too. Um, so Ferrell, Holiday, Cousins, Murray are all at the top. Farrell, Holiday, Cousins, Murray. Okay, so Holiday would be the first one to lock in. Most of those lineups are going to have Yogi Farrell at that point, so it's going to be hard to get away from that. Um, you know, Wiggins then ends up in one of them. We're down to 18. This is telling me to go boogie on DK, which is interesting. I would prefer to go Anthony Davis. So let's grab Davis. That means six lineups. So those are the final six. If I lock in Drew, AD, Wiggins, and Yogi Ferrell. Um, 
I prefer to not have Mason Plumley, but this is basically telling me I need to have either Mason Plumley or Dwight Powell. This one would probably be what I would end up going with if I had to pick out of all of these. Be right here. Rondo. Ooh, man, I don't fucking like that at all. It really doesn't I really don't see an alternative without having to have Plumley or Dwight Powell. In this particular instance, Rondo Holiday, Fournier, AD, Nurkic, Farrell, Wiggins, Murray. All right, that is it, everyone. I am done. One last look at the uh, the short list. We'll sort that up again. But this is what we got, four games late. Um, you know, you guys know the drill, like, subscribe, check me out on Twitter, Reddit, I will be around. We are definitely going live tonight starting at 6 o'clock. Uh, so 6 o'clock, live before lock, be here or be somewhere else, and I'm out. Thank you guys.